What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again. Not Tony Hawk Tech, as some of you might think it is. It's actually Son of a Tech, but uh, yeah. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the performance benchmarks for Nier Automata, and I did have to look that up to make sure I pronounced it right. But let's go ahead and dive right in. Alrighty, so before we really get started here, I did want to mention that the game is quite a bit of fun, and if you guys are kind of interested in it, it's probably worth a pickup if you can find it on sale especially. Of course, most of the sale prices on things like Green Man Gaming and all of that, whether I condone them or not, I just did notice that they were sold out of the kind of cut in price, which is quite interesting. It also has really good reviews and I think for the gameplay and the mechanics it does deserve them. I wanted to clarify that because we're probably not going to have such great things to say about its PC performance unfortunately. But to start things off as always we're going to talk about the test bench which is going to be an i7 7700K overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz and that is mated to an MSI gaming M3 Z270 motherboard. We are running a 256 gigabyte M.2 drive which is actually over SATA but it's in the M.2 slot. It's just not using the NVMe protocol. The power supply is a thermal take 750 watt power supply. Wait. Yeah, 750 watt gold rated power supply and the RAM, the memory is going to be 2400 megahertz clocked 16 gigabytes of DDR4 from Kingston. It is the Savage series. All right, so we stumbled all through that. Let's go ahead and stumble through the settings that we used for the game. We went ahead and just set it to the high option, which actually just literally cranks every other setting up for the game up to its maximum, meaning that the anti-aliasing is all the way up the texture filtering is all the way up shadows are all the way up everything's cranked the only thing it doesn't turn on is vertical sync which really doesn't affect anything for the most part if you're playing on a 60 hertz panel as the game is capped at 60 frames per second you did hear me right this game is capped at 60 frames per second there are some mods that you can get off of steam the discussion forums where you can go ahead and try to unlock it but the reports back from from that are iffy at best and we can kind of see that here when we start talking about the performance for each of these graphics cards that we're about to talk about the other note I wanted to make is that pretty much anytime you drop below it's not an adaptive v-sync so anytime you drop significantly below 60 if you do turn v-sync on you're gonna end up dropping half refresh rate down to the 30 FPS now this doesn't affect some of the top tier graphics cards like the 1070 the 1080 or like the 1080 Ti but if you guys are on pretty much anything lower than like a 1070 you're going to be dropping to 30 fps with v-sync on and the only other issue that i have with that is there seems to be a persistent screen tear almost all the time and yeah i've tried it on three different mo monitors i'll go ahead and go over those i have my lg 4k monitor with the free sync i have the vg 248 QE 144 Hertz from Asus. It's a 1080p panel. And then I have an LG television. It's a 4K television with HDR. And the only monitor, <laughs> the only display option that I had that didn't have the screen tear quite as apparent was actually the TV. Now I'm not sure exactly why this is and I'd like to delve deep into some research on why a television wouldn't over, you know, something else. I would assume that there's some issues going on here with the development and where they focus their resources for the development. So there's definitely some complaints about the performance for the game. Let's go ahead and see what you can expect from some of the latest graphics cards from both AMD and Nvidia in terms of frame rate. So starting things off it's not looking too hot the xfx rx 462 gigabyte after three runs on the graphics driver 17.3.3 3 from amd we had a minimum fps of six <clears throat> with an average of 9.35 and a max of 12. 
Suffice to say, if you guys are running an XFX RX 462 gigabyte, do not even waste your time or money looking into purchasing this game. Maybe, maybe there will be a driver that comes out for AMD that helps. I doubt it. It's pretty bad. What was super interesting, though, is the NVIDIA side had crazy, crazy performance improvements for a card that's not technically that much better than the RX 462 gigabyte, the GTX 1050 had a minimum FPS of 23 with an average of 26.6 and a max of 30 FPS. Now this was on Ultra and I did want to mention when we talked about settings earlier, everything did set to the highest available. The thing that's interesting here is you guys will notice I didn't actually do a settings percent change uh, per setting this time around because there's only one setting that increases frame rate and that's going to be anti-aliasing. Now you do get about a 10 to 15 percent gain but that's still probably not going to be enough to put you over that 30 fps at 1080p for the 1050 from Nvidia. This means that if you guys have a GTX 1050 your best bet unfortunately to get playable 30 fps plus frames is going to be bumping down the resolution below 1080p. So I wouldn't even recommend looking at purchasing this game if you're on a 1050. Things do get better however with the RX 474 gigabyte and it does appear that once it gets over that certain amount of VRAM for AMD for whatever reason uh, we get some better performance. I don't know if there's something going on on the back end that said hey whoa this Nvidia card only has two gigabytes and it cut down some of the settings in the back end unfortunately we just don't have the options uh, or the amount of options i would like to see to tweak performance but that being said you will get playable frame rates with the rx 474 gigabyte with a minimum fps of 33 an average of 40.1 and a max of 47. interestingly enough the rx 488 gigabyte falls behind the gtx 1063 gigabytes it has a minimum fps of 38 with an average of 45 point two and a max of 52. I don't know what's going on here. The GTX 1063 gigabytes it gets us above a 40 FPS average with 42 or a 40 FPS min I should say with a minimum of 42 an average of 47.83 and a max of 53. Finally the 6 gigabytes is a minimum of 49 with an average of 54.3 and a max of 59 which that max is because there's a frame cap and and it's the top like one percent so there you go i don't know guys this this is pretty shameful in my opinion for a game in 2017 to have this kind of performance on some of the newest graphics cards that are currently out in fact i got this game and tested it quite a bit after release it's been out for a couple weeks now at the point it's where i was testing it and i'm a couple drivers in and we're just not seeing what i would consider respect frames for a title right now especially when you consider the amount of horsepower the GTX 1066 gigabyte and the RX 488 gigabyte have even if I hop into the game with my Titan X Pascal, I have random drops depending on where I'm at and it doesn't seem to be CPU related. I'm not capping out on anything there and that's both with the 7700K and with the new Ryzen chip. I'm not sure what's going on. It's, it's quite frustrating. If you guys know a way to improve some of the performance, let me know in the comment section below. Like I said, the best thing you can do is turn off anti-aliasing. If you do this you get a pretty good 60 fps average on the gtx 1066 gigabyte and that's the card i'm gonna have to say you want to go with if you're looking for a gpu to play this game with and don't want to spend upwards of twelve hundred dollars on a 1080 ti sli rig or a titan x pascal hope you guys enjoyed the video don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below and as always i'll see you next tuesday